We're live tonight. I hope everybody can hear us tonight. Uh, two episodes ago, we had a little issue um, technically with the guest not being seen. So if anybody can see, we've had nothing but issues lately, like haven't we? Know. It's not been all week. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's only the time, only when I don't know, man. Only when we have like really big guests, you know, when we're. We're just talk, talking amongst friends here. We're, we're, it, it's clear as day, beautiful, high definition, and all that other good stuff. Um, anyway, long story short, um, this episode is brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. It's the stuff that I drink every single day. It's got CBD oil in it. Yeah, it's about 120 milligrams of this particular stuff. It's called Restore. Um, they're out of Denver, Colorado. There's a link in the description below. If you type in Hammers 15 in the checkout, you can save 15% off your order until July, I'm sorry, June 30th. I'm going to try to see if they can give us another code or something fancy for next time around. Um, and I guess, are you drinking Jameson tonight there, Mr. Wayne McMullen? I'm always I'm trying to get them to sponsor us, but they won't bloody even answer one of my bleeding tweets. Ah. What can I say? You know, yeah, I'm drinking Jameson in my coffee. What can I say? I always do. Always do. But awesome. they aren't doing anything. Come on, Jameson. You, you're rich as, rich as the day's bloody long. I've been drinking you since, since I was like probably four years of age. And you've not done anything. And all I'm looking for is for you to sponsor me for, 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 for Isla Caton's fight for, for neuroblastoma. So come on. Come on, Jameson. Come on. Get with it. Let's get with it, Jameson. So anyway, besides us and our sponsors, we're, we're here with Ann Bishop tonight. I know I've been posting it everywhere on social media. So if you do, I mean, if you're watching this, you probably saw one of our posts about this. And we're really delighted and excited to get a chance to speak with him. Um, and nervous so as shit. Let's put it that way as well. Nervous as shit. <laughs> Especially when you technical <laughs> issue beforehand. Don't have you got your clocks wrong? I'm sure you said, I'm sure you said nine nine o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock in the UK. I'm sure you said that. He you, did, didn't he? You know, I but I it slipped, man. I've it slipped. It slipped. I, I meant to say what? Two two a.m. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Listen, I, I've been going crazy doing these shows. I've been trying to just push, 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 and get as many interviews as possible out there because we're new. We've been around since you know January, and um, it's been growing like crazy. And, and thanks to people like you and, and people from you know Hammers Chat and West Ham Fan TV, and we had uh, Kenny Brown on, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's I, I'm exhausted. I, I I slip up sometimes. No, you know what the truth is? Is he was so, he, was, <laughs> he was so excited when he found out that you had actually agreed to do this. Pretty when much. He was doing the keyboard. He was doing that. It was like, oh blimey, oh blimey. His hands were shaking so much he couldn't even type. <laughs> He, uh, uh, and let, let's let's just let's just tell the viewers this that he sent he sent the invite to the wrong bloody email address. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. Oh, you got, yeah. I wouldn't rob a bank with him, by the way. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, all right, man. Let's let's uh, let's let's have some fun with this. I guess um, what, what we'd like to do is uh, let's let's start off with the rapid ten questions and kick things off and and kind of throw them off a bit. Why, why don't we uh, change things up, Wayne? And, and okay, well, that. this is this is something we actually we just started last last night, and um, we, uh, so bear with me. It's just t it's t I'm stealing this from inside the actors' studio. <laughs> it's the it's the football version of inside the actors' studio questions. So uh, so we'll have a bit of a laugh that, with this one. This is an icebreaker, uh, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it's a nice easy way to e e e ease you into our our in depth. Questions which we don't have any of, thank God, which is fantastic. Oh, we're getting a, we're getting a nice view of the house here, though. <laughs> I'll wait till you get comfortable. Oh, you got to go plug in. I was going to do it on my computer, but you said my phone and my phone's dying, so I'm doing my best. Okay, well, plug your phone in, mate. Make yourself comfortable first. Do it. See, we're all having technical difficulties today. <laughs> There you go. At least I know. Well, I got, I got to tell you this. When I, when I told my mates, I run the, the, the West Ham group down here in Dallas. And when I told my mates, I said, oh, by the way, I'm going to be uh, on on, uh, on the American Amherst channel tonight with uh, with Ian Bishop. They're like, what the fuck? They are so, they're like, they are so freaking jealous. You know, my one mate said to me, he goes, um, what are you going to call him? I said, what do you mean? What am, you, what am I going to call him? He said, well, you're going to call him Ian. You're going to call him Mr. Bishop. You're going to call him Bish. He says, "What are you going to bloody call him?" I said, "I'm trying to kind of, I'm going to avoid any name whatsoever because I've got no bloody clue." <laughs> What's that? Said so you start off calling me a thief. 
Okay, yeah, I did. I started off calling you a thief. Well, come on, I'm used to doing that, being you're from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> well, God knows you've stolen enough goals in your life. <laughs> we're, known, we're known for our sense of humour. There you go. You've got to have a sense of humour. So here you go, then. Here's, here's your, your top ten questions, Fish. Go on. Um, so first one. Irish coffee or hot toddy? Oh, Irish coffee. Okay. Uh, Favourite goal you scored? Port Vale away. That seems what? to be, yeah, what we've been hearing all day is that a lot of the supporters' favourite goal of yours, Yeah, was, the majority of them, I would say. Yeah. yeah, it was one of them, you know, just touch it out your feet and smack it from 30 yards and it happens to fly in the top corner. It was the significance at the time, though, you know, I think it took us back to the top of the league. Yeah, yeah, for definite, for definite. Yeah. It was a beauty, a beauty. Okay, finish this sentence for you. It may, it may sound obvious, but I've had some weird qu answers to it. Um, games are won by blank. Scoring more goals than the other team. Okie dokie. I thought you were going to say by by by, by scousers. Um, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> a word. A word that makes you happy. One word that makes you happy. Guinness. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Um, my mate, my mate Kelly's going to love that. Um, your favourite curse word. <laughs> my favourite curse word. Yeah. Uh, it's not really a curse word, but I. I say Jesus fuck a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a team a that a team that you absolutely loved to beat. Oh man, you like it without a shadow. <laughs> Is there a reason why? I, it's just been synonymous with me throughout my career, to be honest with you. Yeah. Maybe debut for Everton against Man U, a cyber Bournemouth, we had the FA Cup replay against Man U. Uh, I went to Man City. We beat them five-one in the in the derby in a short time I was there. Yeah. We sort of had a hand in Leeds, beating them to the the last first division in '92 by Kenny Brown's goal. And yeah. then five, we drew it the last game of the season. And yeah. and they played scousers anyway. So exactly, yeah, you know, I I've got to say that my my, my favourite wins are all against Man U. They really are. Yeah. They are. I love it. Okay, uh, let's see. What ground have you visited that had the worst conditions you've ever played in? <laughs> the worst conditions? Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, it's not fair, really, if I blame a non-league team, is it? I remember a cup game at, um, was it um, Kidderminster? Kidderminster? What made it so bad? Oh, it was just, it was just a muddy. It, it, was, it was a muddy, and obviously the pressure, a big club going to a, a non-league ground. Um, Freezing cold, having a fight, and coming away with a one 0 win. I think uh, I'm not sure whether Lee Chapman scored or not. I think he might. Have yeah, and, and it's funny I ask that because you know a lot of Americans that are supporting West Ham now is like they see you know the the, the standard of the Premier League pitches and stuff. Yeah. They they they've got no clue what it's like when you know back in those days when you you'd go to visit grounds and no. blimey, some of them were for, for toilets. <laughs> I don't know, but look, I mean it's the same for everyone. You just have to adjust your touch and. And your passing range and, and stuff like that, you know. So there's no complaints, really. Okie doke. Okie doke. Okay. Player you enjoy watching in the current West Ham squad? Oh, I like, I like uh, Diop. Yeah. Um, nice. I, I, lo I love Nobes. I, 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 can't, I can't get the criticism at times, you know. I love yeah. Nobes and the simplicity and the energy in his heart and, and the length of time and, and the servant he's been. And and before he had his little episode, Arn Altovich came to the fourth for me. You know, I thought, yeah, it's yeah. an amazing sign and great transformation what David Moyes did with him, putting him up top and turning him into a proper footballer. And then, you know, things went a little bit sour, but you know, it's going to be massive for us next season if we can get him back on board full time. You know, Let's keep my fingers crossed for that. Yeah, definitely. Fingers crossed. Yeah, he Definitely. needs support too, because you you can tell that you know when, once he's out. I mean, the, the days that he just sets up, he sets foot on the pitch, and you can tell right off the bat that his attitude he's just not there. You can just see it. Yeah. He's walking around. Those are the days that he knows by looking at the lineup around him that he's not going to get the service that he needs, and he's yeah. going to get frustrated. So he's already frustrated before it even gets a chance. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I but, think the was you know that that Moise had pushed him down the middle. He was getting a lot of joy, a lot of credibility. Obviously, the, the transfer window came and he upset the apple cart a little bit. And then even when he did come back, which Pellegrini 
for me, I had to make a statement and leave him out for a little bit. Yeah. When he did come back, he was sort of pushed out wide again, virtually, and he looked like he was having a little sulk up. But, you know, yeah. I think for me, I would, I would play him down the middle again. I would put him back there, pat him on the back a little bit, get him on your side, early doors, tell him to forget about what happened, about, about the leaving, and get him with making us a top 16. Yeah. Now, do you think the criticism with um, Nobes, like – it, Kevin Nolan went through something similar when he was starting to get up there in age two and he was the captain and, and the fans turned against him too. It pretty much just throwing the blame on him just because maybe he was the oldest guy in the pitch at the point. You know what I mean? Like, is it because Noble's getting older that they, they the first excuse they can come up with is, Oh, he's getting older. So it's his legs, his legs gone. We, you know, he, he needs to you know move on or you know, what do you think? I think that's nonsense in this day and age because yeah. I think he gets on the ball more than anybody. Yeah. No, yeah, it's true. Yeah. There's the thing. I mean, but, I, I don't look for stats, but I'm sure if you did look, you'd find out that he has more touches than than almost everybody on the field. Both both teams, you know. Yeah. It, would you know, would you in today's day and age, I think it's easier for for holding midfield players and central midfield players because a lot of the time teams are just back away, they end up going sideways. At, at least with Nobs, he's got a range of passing as well, which which I think at times he looks for that killer ball now and again may not always come off. And I think that's when people get a little bit frustrated because the new breed of supporter has got used to this possession football, you know, and yeah. uh, people aren't trying as much to, to penetrate and split defences. And and I see him still doing that. And, you know... Um, but he still looks brilliant, especially again, the end of the season. The day his legs have gone. But he still looks brilliant. I mean, yeah. he, he had some excellent games the second half of the season. And what is he now, 29, 30? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, younger than right. me, <laughs> younger than us all. Yeah. Oh, but would God. you say he's a player that you you could relate to? I mean, I'm considering. I mean, you you play similar sort of positions, right? Would you say that, yeah. that if you would if you were to come back today, would be a would he be a player that you'd want to play next to? I think so. I mean, look, and it it just depends if you could accommodate the both of us. You know, you you've seen uh, even like the likes of Man City when Pep went to hold the midfield players against Tottenham in the yeah. Champions League, it didn't seem to work, but. I think there'd be a trust there that he knows I'd be there when he had the ball. And I know uh -huh. you'd always that, have that go-to person that you know would want the ball from you and, and, and would be there to support you all the time, you know. There's talk now about England, about can they play that way? They don't have the certain players who want the ball as much. Now, Nobs and me were similar in that sense, that you'd always wanted it. You know, Alba Martin used to have a go at me at times for, for coming and, and getting myself in trouble for wanting the ball and coming back and helping out to yeah. play out from the back. He used to say to me, you're going to get yourself... Um, I said, well, I don't know any other way. I don't know I don't know what it's like not to go and want the ball, you know? And I think gotcha. that is of that stature, you know, I think. Now, you played with some characters back in those days. I mean, what, one, one of my favourite players was always, with, you know, crazy Moncur. What was it like to play with that lunatic? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, brilliant, to be fair. Uh, it's similar, similar thing again. Can you accommodate two? Where when we were talking about the holding midfield, yeah. could you accommodate the two playmakers at the time? People always said you needed a ball winner, but we would say, why do you need a ball winner when you don't give it away in the first place? I think when you look when you look at the stats that go around the Premier League, and and somebody said to Pep about the lack of tackles with Man City to down twentieth or something. He said, well. Well, we always have the ball. Why do we need it? <laughs> and me and, me, and, me and Johnny Monks were similar. We always said, why, why do you need to have a ball winner in there? When I mean, look, Monkey could get his foot in. I could leave my foot in when somebody kicked me first. <laughs> <laughs> that was really when my game changed, when I knew somebody <laughs> and sort of left one in there. And then I could do it. But it never entered my mind before that. You know, it was always about playing the game, playing football. Monkey was great. When Mike Marsh came as well, it was like a five-a-side team, you know? It was, you know, w Wimbledon actually dropped away from us in midfield. Lee Jones actually dropped into back four because he didn't want to be made a fool of. And yet other teams went, let's go against Wimbledon and, and match them physically. We didn't have to. We never changed our game. And we always had results against them. I mean, there were some characters play, playing the game back then, weren't there? I mean, you, you mentioned Wimbledon, and, and I actually, I, I was a lunatic because I, I, I travelled from Wimbledon to go watch West Ham play all the time. But when West Ham was 
playing away and I couldn't afford to go up there, I'd go and watch like the idiots like Finney Jones go out there and, you know, car wash people. Contrast football-wise for you, though, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, t- totally. I, well, it was a night. Nice, those were the games where I'd just go and have a few pints and just act like a lunatic. It was like. Maybe he was going to have a few pints while there was a game on. Yeah, seriously. Well, you know, speaking speaking of that, I mean, I mean, there, there were some some crazy things back then. You guys did did some some crazy crazy things. There, were there any like like crazy locker room antics? I know you talk about like doing stupid things like when you were taking like uh, photographs but for, for the team photos pulling socks down and trying to sure. trying to pull them all over the eyes it was always that and you know the dp in your underpants uh, <laughs> jesus the, the, cutting the toes out of your socks and waiting for you putting them back in your shoes and waiting for you to get changed everybody <laughs> watching you shower and you put your sock on and it comes right up your leg just stupid little things you know um we had a thing with with frank lampard where He'd come in of a Monday morning because obviously the boys had been out the weekend and and we'd be telling stories in the dressing room Monday morning and you'd always see Frank's feet under the cubicle. So we'd pick <laughs> up stories, you know what I mean? And see if it got back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we, always, we always thought the clock on the wall that there was a hole in it in the middle as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Where your deodorant in it. Oh my God! Who, who, was, who was your favourite person to, to to really play with on 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 that squad that you went back then? Because I mean, you saw you saw some of the older play, players. You know, you the, when you came came in in '89, you got um, you know some of the old, older players that that left the team, and then and then you saw some of the newer, younger generations like the Dixies coming in as well, didn't you? Yeah, well, well look, everybody will say will say normal people. Everyone will say Dixie, and, and and why not? You know, yeah, just just what he brought to the game, just what he. It, you know, as a leader, you know, not not the most talkative or organising as a captain, but led by example the way he played the game, the way he trained. You know, I can go through uh, the other side with Timmy Breakhead. You know, before these bombing on fullbacks, Timmy and Dixie were doing that back in the early nineties. I can tell you, Al- Alvin Martin getting the ball at the back and wanting to give it to me all the time. You know, helping yeah. organising the likes of Monks and Marsh. I've already spoke about. You know. Kevin Keane and Stuart Slater or whoever were our wide people, I could hit them without looking. I knew where they'd be, so they helped my game in that sense. Whereas if, if it was a little bit tight and I had to play first time, which we, we probably did most of the time anyway, I knew exactly where they'd be. And they had a yeah. trust that, that they could rely on me to get the ball to them, you know? And then I can look at Frank, Tony Cotty, Clive Allen, the people that, that were ahead of you that you could feed and they would make, look, you, you can make a, a hundred great passes if there's no end product. People really don't remember them. And when yeah. you make a pass where you're slipping a ball through and somebody scores, that's when you're remembered. And to have them, and, them, and, and look, it'll be unfair not to mention Trev because he was leading scorer for three or four seasons. So, you, you know, when you've got them centre forwards area and you know that when you slip them in, because I wasn't a great goal scorer. I used to get the pleasure out of, out of making things and, uh, and you know, having a hand in goals, and you know, so but you scored some beautiful goals. So I mean, you weren't a prolific goal scorer, but when you scored them, they were, oh my god, they were they were masterpieces when you did score them. Well, yeah, you know what? I, I, I look back now and I think maybe I should have been a bit greedier. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe I didn't shoot enough. Maybe, maybe I was always looking for that killer pass instead of, you know, when you've got centre forwards like I've just named. Maybe I'm trusting them more than I'm trusting myself by wanting to want to put them in front of goal. Well, let me taking the responsibility and doing it myself. Yeah, that, well, look, that, go that, ahead. For me, when I seen that compilation, you know, the fact that I mean, I was proud of it because it was it was headers which people said that exactly. It, it was going around the keepers. It was left foot, right foot, striking them, killing them, and, and I was I was really proud to see it. Whoever put it together, you know, I've got to thank them. Yeah, um, I was going to say we, we keep. I mean, everybody talks about the goals, right? I mean, uh, yeah. but what what are a couple of your most favorite assists? Like the, the 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 passes that you know you assisted that just you'll never forget those goals. The ones that stood out. Uh, well, I, I think there was one on on Twitter recently with Danny. I think there was one on Twitter with Danny. Uh, I think it was Man City. We beat them four two, and I've got the ball deep. And I've sort of drawn, I don't know whether it was Stevie Lomas, 
I think it was Stevie Lomont, or Michael Brown it was. Yeah. Drove Brownie and I, I rolled it square to Dixie and took the one two. And he sort of chipped it up and it was on like a muddyish up to bar, which was most of the time. Yeah. The first time I've adjusted my body and swiped the outside of my left foot at it and put Danny through on goal, you know. I mean he still had work to do, but he, he finished, <laughs> you know. I mean that's the one that that sticks in my mind, maybe because I've seen it again recently. Yeah. You know? Don't forget, there was a lot of drunken nights after them games. And no, I... I <laughs> the games have forgotten. I can imagine. Do you, um, do you think that's changed an awful lot over the course of the years? I mean, I mean, football for me, I mean, we're, we're the same sort of age. Um, and it's... Uh, yeah, although you've obviously worn it a lot better than I bloody well have. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, I mean, football has changed to me. I mean, just from a supporter's point of view, it's changed so it's changed so much. Do you think it's changed for the better, or is it? I mean, it seems like it's a much more gentrified type of sport now, almost. It's gone. It's gone corporate. But you know what? I think the players have more of a responsibility now to to take care of themselves because of the salaries, and you know, it, it just looks different. I mean, it's not that we didn't take care of ourselves. We it was very rare that we drank at the wrong times. To tell you the truth, mm -hmm. and and because you have a love of the game yourself, and and every time you go out, you you want to perform and want to give your best. You really, we didn't abuse ourselves unless we were allowed to. But when we did, we went mental. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we played Newcastle away and we'd lost, and and I hadn't played too well. And I know my position was under under a little bit of pressure because Billy and Harry had told me before and. So we've lost. I'm a little bit disappointed. We've had a few beers on the bus. I've gone out Saturday night. I've obviously gone out Sunday because it was a free day. They called me <laughs> the morning, right? And I'm sitting in my corner. And as they've walked in, the boys are coming in going, oh, here we go, you know. What is it? that, that you know? Are we going to make us watch the video again and horror shows and all this? And, and as soon as Harry walked in, Harry went, oh, my God, look at the state of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what's your problem? <laughs> been on it all weekend, haven't you? I said, no, I haven't been on it all weekend. You're wrong, see? And the lads are looking at me, here we go. I'm like, you're wrong. There was a few curse words. Maybe Jesus fuck was thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> and I've gone, yeah, I was out Saturday. I'm allowed. I've done my job. And then on Sunday, I only had 10 points. <laughs> oh, oh, blimey. I wish they had the behind the scenes, you know, footage of that shit. You know what I mean? Like like they do today. You you can't get away with anything today with, with all the cameras and social media yeah. and everybody with their phones and whatnot. But I'm God, sure the, the, the stories I hear. I'm sure if the cameras were there, then we wouldn't have been any different. No, no, no. I know. I'm just saying that would be awesome if that was captured. Like, yeah, it would be, yeah. yeah. Um, so a real quick question, uh, I, I was meaning to ask this, uh, I've been waiting to actually ask this. I haven't really, heard, I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of interviews of you and I've also read some interviews, but what I, I didn't really hear, like what, what do you, you find the differences in, you know, Macari and Bonds and Redknapp, like under your, you know, time with them, like as, as managers, because obviously I've spoken to, um, you know, people like, you know, Jack Collison. You know, behind the scenes, I said, "Hey, you know, what was it? What was it like to playing for Big Sam and, and you know, Abram Grant and and obviously, um, you know, uh, uh, Zola. You know, and and it's fascinating to hear, and it, you know, pretty much the mentality of these managers, and also the, what it bleeds into the mentality of the, the squad. So from from certain changes, you know, which yeah. one of them drank most? Let's get down to it. Oh, there we go. That's an easy one. <laughs> which one of them drank most? <laughs> uh, um... Macari. <laughs> No, Lou didn't drink, did he? No, of course not. The thing with Lou, he signed me, and I must he must have known. I must have had a bit of a reputation there. And and he actually gave me a comment. I wasn't really with him for long enough to sort of really talk about his managerial, managerial skills, but he obviously knew a player when he seen one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know afterwards he told me that he'd only mentioned my name in a swap deal because he didn't want Wardy to go. And he thought Howard Kendall wouldn't let me go. Lo and really? Howard, Howard sort of Good said, a God. Oh, once he's prepared to let you go. So I had my time under Lou. And I sort of got to know him, that he didn't, he didn't like players having a drink and all that. Didn't mind you having a bet, which was fine. 
but you couldn't have a drink and well no no one was going to stop us doing that you know but um the thing when billy took over and, and i've said it one of the nicest people you'll meet anywhere in the world not just in football he's he's an amazing person to be fair and for what he did and the loyalty you know similar to nobs you know when you think of west ham you think of these people yeah yeah and, you know, I'm not going to go into what what I thought happened. I did a and a when I was home for the Southampton game, and I sort of gave a, a view. It, it, Harry will say one thing, Billy will say his side. You know, all I can say is, look, Billy's one of the most honest people that I know, and and I wouldn't like to go out there and say, because no matter how many fallouts I had with Harry, he resurrected my career, for one, at four. Yeah. Right? He gave me freedom on the pitch. He let me go and do my own thing and trusted me. And I loved him for that. We did have run-ins. We had fallouts. He didn't like my lifestyle. It's no secret. Uh, I didn't like that he didn't like my lifestyle. So, so we did have our, our moments. You know, I don't know if I, I said before about when he said, why don't you just have a glass of wine after your meal? Like all the foreign lads. And I said, well, I grew up in a council estate. When did I have a glass of wine? <laughs> And I just said to him, look, if you don't like what you're seeing, if I let you down on a Saturday, take me shirt off me, you know? And I played 300 games, so I kind of done that bad. Seriously? Oh, blimey. Yeah. I, I remember now when you when you first signed for us, I actually, I'd, I'd flown over to the States that year. Um, and my granddad said to me, he says, he says, we got we got this geezer with these bloody long locks. My, my granddad hated anybody with long hair. He said, <laughs> he said but... He's all right on the ball. <laughs> He's all right on the ball. He said, so he says, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a couple of matches. So my granddad had been watching, watching West Ham since he was a kid. Right. Um, and then every conversation I had with my granddad on the phone, he would give me a blow-by-blow -blow account of everything he was doing on the pitch. Because yeah. it, was, it was hard to watch. It was hard to, you know, I was living over in the States. I couldn't see anything. So I've caught up on your career through watching YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. Just a, a joke opportunity there. It wasn't a blow-by-blow. With me and Trevor Morley, was it? Oh, nah. blimey. you know what? I tell you what. The, the one, I think, the one thing that that whole thing has shown is that is that how much integrity and how much strength that you you actually had from back in those days. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it had to be brutal going through all of that. Yeah, look, well, well, I found a way of joking and laughing about things, which I do about most things in life, you know. I Holding think Dick's hand though was the best. You know, we we don't really really need to go back there anyway. I mean, Trevor's still a great nah. man today. You know, it's, it's been done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about that beforehand. We were like, nah, we're not even going to... No. no. But, um, coming to visit. I've had Georgie Paris over there. Mike Marsh has been over. Stevie Lomas has been over. You know, the beauty of... Living yeah, how much were the... In fact, one of, one of the um, the guys from my group, he, when I said, you know, are there any questions you want to ask? And um, Adam Frankel, he said, he said I've, he's actually got a Polaroid from when um, he was a kid and you and, and, and Trevor came around his, his school because he went to school in the West Ham area. And he says, I, I've got a Polaroid for when they came around the school. He said, ask him if, if he still, if he remembers taking that picture. I'm like, yeah, do me a favor, Adam. I'm sure he doesn't remember he taking said, that picture. Yeah, but he said something about you got, you were there to film something for a kid's TV or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was called Teenage Health Freak. Was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Teenage Health Freak, yeah. Really? But he also said, he, also, he said, do you, hang, do you hang out much with, with any of the lads from the squads from back then still? But well, when I go home, yeah, I mean, the last time I was home, I stayed at Stevie Lomas's house. And I got, I got to see, I mean, look, if I, can, if I go to game, I get to see them all. Yeah. And yeah. The time, before, the time before me, Monkey, Lomi and Trev got together for a few beers and Kenny Brown come out as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's seeing Ludo again was brilliant. It, it, we take some nice pictures. I always speak with Gailey, with uh, Tony Cotty, you know, me and Frank message now, now and again, but because of his... Issues he's not allowed to come to the States for a while. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you end up over in the States? I got an airplane. Oh, yeah, I knew that was <laughs> bloody well coming. When I said it, I knew it was I mean, bloody coming. Was it because <laughs> you, you were playing here and you loved it so much? or I was, I was at Man City and we just had the two consecutive promotions back to the Premier League. And um, it's coming to the end of that season and Ace of Hartford came to me and said, um, I mean, my contract was coming to an end anyway, and it was either stay involved in the coaching 
I knew the people upstairs because I was 35. People upstairs in Man City weren't too keen on giving me another year or whatever. I know Joe Royal was, but you know it was it was the people upstairs. So I did a whisper, and I thought, you know what? I came back when I left West Ham and went back to Man City. I said, I've come back to finish a job. You know, my time there the first time was too short. I've come back to get this club back in the Premier League, and that's exactly what happened. And I walked yeah. away on great terms with everybody. Yeah, that's where I've been lucky. I've never left the club on bad terms. Not even Carlisle, where we had a couple of relegations. I know I'm welcome back wherever I go, and that that like warms me heart. You know what I mean? It's there's no there's no real winners medals in the cabinet, but but that to me, I carry that round everywhere. Well, it's because your character and your ethic. You know, what I mean, everywhere you went, you you worked hard, you put it in, and you you were you know, um, yeah, you were you had a great character. You know, but, you but, weren't an asshole to the fans. You know. No, never was, no. Never yeah, exactly. Was. No, always had time. I was always the last one getting dragged away from the from the bar. When I was talking to fans, the lads would be saying, the cab's outside, we're going somewhere else. I'd always be the <laughs> last one getting in the taxi, you know, because I didn't yeah. want to walk away. I'd stand and talk yeah. all with anybody all night, you know, whatever whatever fans they were. It was, you know, it's always been like that. But but like I said, the, the American thing, he said Arthur that said, you know, a friend of his, Ray Hudson, uh, Ace had gone and played in the States back in the day in the old NASL. He went, I heard there's a team in Fort Lauderdale, but it called Miami, but they're in Fort Lauderdale. How do you fancy going and sp speaking to them? I went, wow, hold on a minute. I've got an offer from Barnsley, offer from Sheffield Wednesday, and one from Miami. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Barnsley, that's, that's what Barnsley's got some nice locals. <laughs> I'm a sucker for palm trees, man. Now, I, I mean, I, I I wouldn't blame you one time a little bit. One time a little bit. It's, uh, I, it's interesting the way football's actually grown over here. I know Tim, Tim used to run an MPSL team over here, and, and I actually I do colour commentary for an MPSL team here on, on the weekends, and it's, 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 it's wonderful the way it's grown over here in the States. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, look, uh, without having a go, it's grown fan base-wise and, and – the amount of clubs and that, I think the standard could still be a little bit better. Oh, definitely. I think this is the policy, what they have, it was the same with me. You know, you bring someone in from the outside, they get an extortionate wage. And they're yeah. These dished out between, they have to bring in like Hondurans or Venezuelans or, or whatever to, to fill a roster and, and that will accept that type of, so I think in that sense, the standard could be better and it won't really be a proper league until they start competing financially well not only that but i think there's a lot of charlatans that come home come over from back home as well that, that set themselves up to be experts and they aren't i've yeah. had people say to me you know you can you can make money out of football over here because you yeah. know just set yourself up coaching and I, I i'm very honest about it i'm like i'm not a coach i don't know anything about football except screaming in the yeah. stands yeah. They're, like, that doesn't make, they're like that doesn't make any difference you could still go out there and scream and they'll think you know what you're screaming about and i'm like yeah. no that's not that's not not what I do. No, that so, was, but there are a lot of people that do that, unfortunately. That was frustrating for me when I went into coaching. When I came back and went into the coaching side, uh, that was the frustrating thing, that people would come over. And, and look, in this day and age, well, I'll Google them. You know what I mean? If they're yeah. I played. But, but to be fair, some of them weren't lying. Some could say, let's say I, I played for Wigan. And they might have played for Wigan when they were non-league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were Wigan were in the Premier League, and they're not lying really. They're just tricking their way a little bit to getting jobs. And and look, I had it myself. Look, for me to give the time I gave in in England and, and the amount of games I played, seven hundred games, let's say, yeah, yeah. pro games. And people here coming in, them charlatans you're talking about, getting bigger salaries than me and working at bigger clubs than I was, you know. So I just ended up going alone. I ended up doing my own thing, trying to set up my own academy. There's too many bad guys for me to really succeed because they'll go with the majority. So is, is that what you're up to now? No, I, st I stopped. I stopped the coaching bit uh, about two years ago. I do go up to Palm Beach once a week to help my friend out. He's got a club and, you know, he says it's nice for him to have my name on his website for me to actually yeah. come in and teach the kids you know, for what I feel is the right way to do things. You know, That's so awesome. once a week. Yeah. 
No, no we actually we had a question from somebody on on Facebook, a guy by the name of Gary Perridge, and he says, "Did you enjoy playing for West Ham when when you did, or would you rather have preferred to have played now when there are loads of teams being like having money thrown at them?" No, I think um, I wouldn't swap my time for anything, even the relegations. I, w- yeah. I wouldn't stop it. it. It's not just it's not just the, the football, the money. It's the people you come across. It, it's knowing that. I played in front of a generation of West Ham fans that really appreciated you putting the time and effort in, not just on the field, but what we did away from the field as well, you know. People don't mm-hmm. see that side of things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and being able to relate, when I go back now, to, to, to talk to people about it, and and it's like they remember it, they like you more now than when you played. Yeah. Play. It's like, because now they take they sit back and and compare you to what we have maybe today or the last 10 years and and maybe realise what you did for the club and what you went through and yeah. the effort and work that you put in. Plus, right now, in, today, you can't do nothing wrong. When you're on the field, you're going to have your good days and bad days and people liking you and disliking you. Today, it's just all about, it's nice to see you, you know? And then it makes them go back and think, wow, he did this, he did that. Yeah. Yeah. I used to enjoy watching them play, and that's that's as good as it gets for me. That's this, I come back for the Southampton game, and just walking through the fans and speaking, just saying hello, just on the off chance when someone has a double take at you. Yeah. And, oh, bitch, and then you start and have a chat. I mean, I, I sort of came away saying to people, I got away from it all, and I was fine with being away from the limelight and the adulation. And I was, to be fair. It wasn't what we did it for, but it's nice every now and again. When something like that happens to you, you know, or when they make one of these, yeah, ah, yeah there you go. <laughs> that was Wardy's problem. Was he said, when I Oh my god, he said, When I played against Pitch, I had them in my pocket, and he pulled up, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But right now, if you threw up a ball between you and him right now, he'd probably beat you with the other. <laughs> um re- oh god uh r- real quick this is about the time we we usually check into the chat room there's a live chat going on right now um we have jimmy who we had on last night um we have steve skipping uh who says he's fired up for this episode uh my mother i guess lily is in, in here it's the first time she's ever been in the chat room i guess she saw your long locks and was like hey well, want to check out this one uh <laughs> uh ken uh, Lee, lee's friend my my regular co-host lee uh his friend ken's in here uh gabe de Leon, we just had an interview with him he's one of our longtime viewers and we you know to say thank you we invited him on as a guest um also wally's in here uh gary perridge who asked that last question he's in here um there was someone mentioned uh mike marsh and uh martin allen like they wanted to know i guess you know you were talking about players earlier and uh yeah well if you want if you want if you if you think John Moncare was nuts, Martin was a different nuts. He was <laughs> he was an eccentric nuts, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He he could burn the hotel down. Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah, honestly, you you wouldn't know he was doing it, but I mean, <laughs> Monkey was a Monkey was a <laughs> Monkey was just like to get naked a lot and stuff. Martin was just, <laughs> and I think he is today as well. I think if you see Martin or watch his interviews today, he he's no there. He's actually got worse, I think. Uh, well, Mar- I'm so- <laughs> <laughs> Mar- 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 two weeks ago when I was back home in England, I didn't get a chance to see him. He's working for the England under 17s, isn't he? So I didn't really get a chance, but he was a great footballer and and a good drinker, if you know what I mean. I yeah. Know, uh, there was an Olympian called Johnny Gray. I don't know if you remember him. He, he used to wear the beads. He was a pacemaker. Yes, he, yes. Back in the days of the 800, the 1500 or whatever. Yep. He'd go off hell for leather and, and sort of try and set the world records for the likes of Over and Cram and Co. And yep. For them, I think. So, Marshy, we used to call him Johnny Gray because <laughs> we'd go out at 12 o'clock and he'd drink like a fish. And you'd have to keep <laughs> And then at half eight, nine o'clock, he'd, he'd disappear. So oh he was a 
And then you'd already be scalloped. You'd stay out till four in the morning and get in uh, trouble with everybody, you know? Oh, my God. He used to have a gun. I used to... I used to uh, here's another... I used to put my arms both side of him at the bar when I could see him itching to get out. I'd put my arms either side of him at the bar <laughs> stop him going home. Oh, my God. Great lad, <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, it says, uh, uh, this is from Steve Skippen. He says, I remember a game Bish was playing versus Wimbledon when a fan in the chicken run gave Vinnie Jones a blow up sheep with Mrs. Jones written on the side. Uh, he lifted it over his head like he was a troll. <laughs> uh, while he's in the, uh, we are at that. Uh, I remember that. Let's here real quick. Uh, there's somebody from England watching, and it's uh, pretty late over there right now. So thank you for watching. That's awesome. Um. Yeah, you get uh, you get a couple more questions there, uh, Wayne. Right? Um, blimey, like where are we here? I, I have got. I've got what I think I've got one. Uh, where okay. are we? Here? Yeah, it was either two or one. Yeah. Oh gosh, where are we? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I know, oh, yeah. I, I, I got one too. Yeah, so what? what, what it's from from Steve Fenton one two three on Twitter, and he says, "What does Ian think that the team needs to succeed next season? And what do you think of Pellegrini so far?" I like him. I thought it was it was great the fact that he came to the club. Um, you know, I thought he was getting things going up until January, and the team itself. They actually, when you look back at the, the results, they showed that at any given time, they had what it takes to. I said at the beginning of the season. Everton, Leicester and West Ham will be fighting for seventh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Any reason why we couldn't get there, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it was very sporadic, the, the way the results went for us. We'd have maybe two or th even three bad results in a month and then go and beat Man United at home or, or draw yeah. with Liverpool or, yeah. or, you know, or, or draw with Chelsea. So it was a little bit, I think what, what we need more than anything is a little bit of consistency, uh, a bit of unity back in the dressing room. I think that's got to be, first and foremost, the first game we walk out. You know, we didn't start too well. I think we lost the first three games, didn't we? Four. Yeah, the first four. First four, yeah. Was yeah. Or, or uh, was it? First four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was the first four. It was the first four. They won in the fifth yeah. game against Everton, yeah. Don't be having that. Um, so so it, it's just finding that unity again. He'll maybe add one or two players, but I think he's... More importantly, he's got to find out how to get the best out of Arnautovic, Antonio, Lanzini, um, and... Um, Anderson? Anderson? Yeah, yeah. Philip Anderson. He's got, to, he's got to figure out how to get more consistency from them as a unit. Because that yeah. four, that four if, that's a, if that's a three and a one, you know, if he doesn't sign, I know he's after a centre forward, but... If he doesn't sign, and that four should be as good as any. Exactly. Exactly. It you know, should be. Yeah. If they're all on their game. Uh, yeah, on paper it would be. Yeah. Um, a, uh, a lot of people. A lot of people say, say that. You know, uh, sometimes the guys go out and play, and it just doesn't look like they want to win. How do you feel when you hear supporters say that that the players go out there and they just don't look like they want to win? Because I mean, I hear that voice an awful lot, and I can't believe that any player ever goes out yeah. and doesn't want to win. No, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that they don't want to win. I think some of them think they're better than they are. Mm -hmm. I think some of them go out there and think, hold on a minute, especially players that's come from bigger clubs maybe, and it is, they feel like they're stepping down. But that gap's closed yeah. now. You know what I mean? That, that gap's, gap's closed. I mean, let's take Chicharito without picking on him. He's yeah. Getting chance after chance with Man United and, and Real Madrid. And then all of a sudden, does he come to West Ham? When he came, I thought... What's his work rate going to be like? How's he going to find it when he's got to create his own chances at times? You know, you, can't, you, you come to a team that, you know, you, you've got to sort of be self-reliant within that squad, within that team also. And is he going to have that? You know, I think that was more the issue. You know, when, when Arnie did what he did and, and people say, oh, would you go for the money? Obviously you would. I said, no, obviously you wouldn't because back, back for me, when it, it would have changed my life to go from three grand to 10 grand a week. That would have been a life changer. So you can understand somebody doing that. Um, to go from 150 to 200 or whatever it was, is not a life changer to me. Then no. you've 
Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got to take into consideration. Yeah, you're already there. It's about the football. Now, why leave the best league in the world to go to China? On Even on 300 grand a week, who cares? You, you no, know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot like the MLS over there too, where you, they only have they're only allocated X amount of you know big money players on exactly. you know six figures a week, and yeah. then the rest are all I Chinese, mean, right? Paid. Are they going to enjoy the lifestyle? Are they going to coast through the games? Where's that challenge? Especially look uh, when I'm, we're talking about the MLS. I went it was thirty five. People normally come here when they're around about thirty four, thirty five, and you've still got maybe two. I thought I could have played for another four or five years, to be honest, because you can't lose pace that you never had in the first place. As long as, <laughs> as, long as your mind stays sharp, you know, and, and the one and two touch. Plus, in the heat of this country, I felt like people came down to, and if you dictate a game as well, you know, which yeah. I felt that was one of my strengths. You know, the game was, I sort of tried to dictate the pace of a game. And there was obviously good players, great players who played against that overran you at times, but the majority of times I felt like, I played at my pace, you know? Yeah. Um, we got one more question for you, man. Um, this is from Gary Smithhurst. He says, uh, can you ask Gary? I'm sorry, this is Gary asking. Can you ask? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can you ask Ian um, about his recollections of the FA Cup semifinal against Forrest at Villa Park uh, regarding the sending off of Tony Gale? And then the magnificent support of the West Ham fans. Uh, Bish was the skipper that day, and despite the loss, it was one of my favourite memories of that era. Yeah, it's probably one of my favourite games that I lost. Yeah, um, it it showed to me just just the loyalty and and, and the deep loves that that the fans have for the club itself. You know, we obviously underdogs. We were the only team in the semis from the second division at the time, whatever. And and for me, it was. Every boy's dream was to go to Wembley and, and captain your team at the FA Cup final. Now, a numbnuts called Keith Hackett went and ruined it all, really, for me. Who knows whether we, whether we still would have lost the game, you know, in all honesty. Um, we were a football inside. Forrest were a football inside. I think we proved after the promotion the season after, I think we went and won at the city ground, beat them at home, you know, with the same team sort of thing. I don't think... Yeah. I'm not 100%, but I'm sure we either drew the city ground and beat them at home. Um, but, but getting a man sent off after 20 minutes and, and going back to the, to the sand pits that we played on. How was it Tottenham and Arsenal played at Wembley in their semi and we played at Villa Park, which was just sand. Two yeah. teams, like us and Forest, they put us on a sand pit for whatever reason. Yeah. Didn't affect the sending off, you know, gaily. Um, it was what it was, but it did change everything. It changed it to the extent of when we went a goal down, you, you chase with 11 men is one thing. When you're chasing with 10 men, you're obviously going to leave yourself open, and that's that's what eventually happened. But but the thing for me was, you know, the, the, the West Ham fans, the constant noise, and I'm sure the Forest players couldn't believe it neither. I'm sure they really w wasn't given a chance to enjoy or celebrate that moment for themselves because of what the West Ham fans did and what they made of that day. Uh, it was it was deafening. And I've always said, I've never seen nothing like it in football, anywhere. And I don't believe you ever will. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, that's that's what it meant to me, you know. And the disappointment, you feel the disappointment so close to Wembley, the, the year that I was captain. Even getting promotion, we sort of got kicked in the stones with that as well, with losing the last game of the season and finishing second. We've got automatic promotion about five games left and didn't celebrate. So we really didn't celebrate promotion, you know, at all. So we, we, we lost out a little bit. But, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful and, and, and proud to have been part of the squad that I feel through the early 90s stabilised the club. I think that's what that group of players did. And I think that's what they should be remembered for as much as anything. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like I said, my, my granddad, you know, watched West Ham from, you know, from being a kid. And uh, and he's, he said that that time he, he regrets the fact that I had to, that I'd moved back to the States. He said, because you, you missed one of the best periods of West Ham's history, yeah. he said to me. And uh, and, and, and I, I never knew an expert, more expert on West Ham's history than my granddad was. Yeah. And 
and and, and it, it, like I said, he would send me over the newspapers every single Monday. <laughs> well, look, well, look, going back to your question before about would a change of playing now or playing then, these players today won't get the chance to play at Upton Park midweek under the lights. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. They're lost. They're lost. Yeah. 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 And think about that every Good time. times. <laughs> <laughs> good times, good times, good times. But I, I also remember being there when it was pissing down a rain and miserable, bloody rotten times and getting a, 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 a manky rotten pie. So I've had some rotten, stinking times there too, but it, it's your family. It's your family. <laughs> yeah. You wanted up to park, mate. You could have beaten anybody. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Um, yeah. Yeah. Is, so, is there anything else that you're up to, or you want to uh, mention or plug or anything? No, mate. I mean, I've, I've got a little training tool going on, but it's it's been going for quite a while. I've just I was when I was on holiday in Spain, I flew across to England to make a little video to uh, to pitch it to people. So, I mean, I really can't say too much because it's only uh, pending right now, and don't want anyone stealing the idea. So at least you you know, you're working on something though. I'm working yeah. on uh, yeah. No, exactly, but you are working on something. I'm yeah. working on something. Well, that's good to hear. Good. Good. And, and, you know, it's nice. I've been back a couple of times. I got to go to go to the Southampton game. I got invited back. And, and really, I didn't come back enough this this last season just gone. I'm going to try and uh, get back to a few more games this season. I really think that the aura around the club right now it just has that feeling that we could actually make a cup run this year. And plus, with Mark Noble, you know um, – I, I want to see the club win a cup for Mark Noble. Yeah. I, I really do. Because in order for them to, you know, give him a his own stand or, or make him a West Ham legend for forever, like Billy Bonds, would be he needs a cup. You know, I think this is the year, yeah. man, especially with the the, the new kits and everything like that. Uh, it's just it, everything feels like it's going to fit that this year they'll – They'll make an yeah. effort. And in year two under Pellegrini, just it all sounds and feels right. They it, keep on keep hold of Declan Rice. I mean, this is just yeah. it feels like this could be the year. Well, 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 look, let, let them prove that. Let them prove that by not selling. Let, let's keep Arnie, let's keep uh, Anderson, let's keep Declan Rice, let, let's keep Lanzini. Let's let the let the club prove that. There yeah, let them as well. I, I, I sense it as well, you know. I mean, I yeah. don't like to look over the summer because there's all sorts of he might come, he might come, and you end up disappointed. So I sort of block myself away from it, if I can. Yeah. You know, concentrate on other things, and then and then once the season starts and you've got your team, you've got your squad, let's let's concentrate on it then. But but you know, it's, I think I think even top six now because you know Man United finishing in that position. I don't think I don't see what great changes they're going to make. You know, if, no. if you get at them. You know, it's still going to be that same dressing room with a couple of troublemakers in there. I don't see why you can't finish top six and, and get automatic yeah. Europa League, you know? No, I, I think yeah, something I'm good for that too. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I think so. I, I, I'm, uh, and you know, and if, and if we don't make top six, I'm going to say, well, I'm blaming, blaming Ian Bishop because he told me we were going to finish top six. <laughs> so oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, always, I'm always glass half full, man, until I empty it. <laughs> you can't start like we started last season. You can't give yourself a mountain to climb. Exactly, exactly. We have to. We have to start running. Yeah, I think they broke the ice at Goodison, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which wasn't worked out. Wasn't an easy place to go. And that's the thing. Seriously. And that's that's where. Uh, so Yarmolenko had a fantastic game that match, and I cannot wait to see him back at full health. Or Jack Wilshire. Hope to God he can stay healthy. I forgot about him getting the injuries back. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Competition is what you need, but but you need you need them players that will accept competition. They won't go so mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Me, it's about temperament. You know, you, you can't keep everybody happy, but at least you want to see them fight. And if if they're fighting and still not getting in, it means something must be going right out on the field, which we all want. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's going to happen. And I uh, listen. I, I I can't thank you enough. Um, tomorrow is fixture day, so we can yeah. actually see who we're going to start the season with. So that's kind of exciting to find out who we're going to play first at home and first away. So we can start planning, uh, you know, some trips over there. Yeah. And 
it'll be fantastic. But listen, Ian, I can't thank you enough, my man. I, I know I've been, I was kind of a hound, but uh, I really appreciate oh. you coming on. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done it, but I was on, I was on two trips, wasn't I? I, I went you on, were, yeah. I went on like eight days, I come back for five, and then I went went away again for ten days. So. I was just a little bit up in the air, to be fair. And I, and I was the asshole that was like, hey, uh, well, I'll give you a date like a month from now. And you're like, I can't think that far ahead, man. I, I don't plan that far ahead. <laughs> I, could, I, could just, I could just imagine you sitting there like, going, on, looking at your email going, go. Jesus, fuck, it's this guy from American Hammer TV again. <laughs> <laughs> if I just do the interview, I'll shut him the fuck up. Yeah. Right. I was looking at my Twitter going, Jesus, fuck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I gotta anyway. tell you, this is this this has been the this has been the highlight of my of my life as a West Ham supporter, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I totally. It. I mean, you you have you have been totally gracious, a complete gentleman, and and an absolute freaking blast and a half. Yeah. Um, it, it, I've I've laughed so much, and I tell you what, I'm I'm glad that all of my mates are gonna be so fucking jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure, fellas. Anyway, I appreciate it. Really that. Was, we'll it really was. It really was. Thank we'll, you so we'll much. Talk to, we'll talk to you right off the air in just one minute. Okay. So, uh, Thank I just got to mention real quick that um, our next show is tomorrow night. Uh, Lee is going to be hosting a show with Allie, who we've had on. Uh, Wayne and I interviewed Allie from the UK. She went to every single West Ham women's match last uh, matches last season, and she's going to be there with Justin from Chicago Hammers and Lee. Those three are going to interview. Anna Morehouse, Brooke Hendricks, and Aaron Simon from the West Ham women's team. So two of them are Americans, and Anna Morehouse is obviously from, I think she's from like Oldham or something like that. But anyway, um, that's going to be a fantastic interview. We've been dying to get the women on. We tried getting them on during the season, but West Ham wouldn't let us have them during the season. So now that the season's over, here we go. It should be good. And then um, I really don't know what else we have next, but we have a lot of shows coming up. I do know that. And uh, listen, thank you so much. Come on, you Irons. Wait.